Junto Nakatani moving up in weight to challenge himself against Alejandro Santiago. Round one underway of this championship fight. Karan Batia on the call, joined by Chris Algieri. Alejandro Santiago in the gray and black trunks. Junto Nakatani in the silver trunks with the white gloves. And this is shaping up for a fantastic matchup, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. This is one I'm really looking forward to. Santiago really impressed me in his last win when he beat the legend. Nonito Donaire put on a great 12-round performance. This is Nakatani's first fight at this weight class, so not only just moving up, not only just fighting in a world title fight, not only that, but he's fighting a very, very tough champion in Alexandro Santiago tonight. And Junto Nakatani listed at 5'8", so he's tall for this weight class. He actually started his career, Chris, at 104 0.25 pounds, which is which is actually very incredible. Yeah, I mean it's incredible even now. Right here, five foot eight at 118 pounds. You know, and you, you see that long body, long torso, very wide stance, which is always interesting to me that Nakatani can get the power that he gets, even though he fights out of that wide stance the way he is. And there we saw the left hand come in. Nakatani uses the right hand to blind his opponents, and it's that long left hand, sometimes to the head, sometimes to the body. We saw him throw it there again, and it's a very dangerous weapon. Yeah, he's very explosive too, so you know the, the, the blinding lead hand and then that big power to follow up in the left hand. I'm curious to see how he carries that power here into this new weight class. Santiago's not, now Santiago's not known as a puncher, but he is a physically bigger man. He's been in this weight class for a longer amount of time. A little clash of heads there. And just in terms of sheer grit and determination, Alejandro Santiago taking out Nonito Donaire. It wasn't easy. He really no, had to not. dig deep. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned he was also going through some personal turmoil. turmoil. His house burned down. His wife and, and kid were in danger there. They got out OK. But that wasn't easy to deal with in terms of the preparation for him in that fight. No, he was cut over both eyes in that fight. Took some big, big power from Nonito Donaire, who's got legendary power early on. But it was his work rate and his engine that won him the day in that night. Let's see if he can bring that same energy and effort here tonight against Nakatani. And his heart and his will, tough as they come. And that's why this is this is such an intriguing matchup here. Yeah, Santiago is going to be working all night long to get inside that long reach of Nakatani. You see that he's having trouble closing the distance. Nakatani doing a good job using that lead hand to keep Santiago on the outside. And we see Nakatani there at distance. So many times we see tall, long fighters not taking advantage of those assets. Nakatani is doing so. Oh no, he's a, he's a master at range. He likes to stay on the outside, keep you busy with that lead hand, and then as you step over that critical distance. Rudy Hernandez said Nakatani's always been an extremely disciplined fighter, always wanted to be in the gym, and that's why the duo has been together for as long as it has. And, and that's shown up in the accomplishments that Junto Nakatani has had at only 26 years old. Yeah, truly a special talent. You know, when you, when you put that all together, you put that physicality that he has mixed with the, the talent, the skill, the power, and then the discipline on top of it. You sprinkle some discipline on top, man. That, that, that makes for something special. Both fighters coming from humble beginnings. Both fighters hungry with determination and will, and that's why they've reached this position and this moment. And just, just you can see the size difference, Chris. I mean, it's it's very apparent, and, and that's gonna make for a, a truly interesting dynamic in this championship fight. Yeah, absolutely. You see those long legs, that wide stance, you know, I, I always say Nakatani reminds me of a praying mantis and the way that he stands. He's got the, those hands up high. He's got those legs spread wide. He's able to counter with explosiveness and, and good reactions. Here we're seeing that all on display. Nakatani listed at five foot eight. Santiago at five foot three. Nakatani with the 69 and one quarter inch reach. Santiago with the 65 and a half. So it's, it is going to be a stark difference in this fight. But Chris, as you mentioned, this is Santiago's weight class, right? He's comfortable at this weight. And this is the first time Nakatani is moving up those three pounds. Yeah, you saw that attempted counter uppercut from the outside from Nakatani. I had mentioned last round that 
he draws a line in the sand, and then as you cross that critical distance line, he'll let that left hand go like that, whether it be an overhand left like that or the uppercut, which you saw a few moments ago. And not only is it an electric, lightning-fast left hand, but he uses the right to blind you, so it makes it all that more tough to, to defend against it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see him landing that jab over the top consistently. Boom, and he puts that left hand right behind it. Lightning quick. Oh, and don't forget about those uppercuts. I, f I almost forgot about those. I, I don't know how, because of the Maloney fight, he couldn't miss with either hand the uppercuts, but that's a very dangerous weapon for him. Being so tall, everyone has to kind of crouch to get in, which opens them up for uppercuts up the middle. If the blinding jab and the straight left hand weren't enough, you got to deal with the lightning quick uppercuts from Nakatani. And that's going to be Alejandro Santiago's challenge here tonight with 20 seconds to go in round two. Good short left hand right down the middle. Splits the guard of Santiago. And so far, Chris, it's been Santiago trying to get inside oh. close distance. Big right hand there lands for Santiago and another one. Just as we were talking about what he was trying to do, he had success getting on the inside and throwing the right hand. Yeah, those, those are some of the best punches that were landed tonight. And they were landed by the champion Santiago. Great shots there, good timing. He was punching with Nakatani and caught him flush on the chin. And it took him almost all of two rounds to finally get inside. But when he did so, he made Nakatani pay. Yeah, those are those are big shots. Very, very clean. And that's really what Santiago's going to have to do tonight. He's going to have to take a risk to get inside, close that distance, and land shots like that. He's going to have to punch with, with Nakatani at the risk of getting hit with big shots himself to land his own power. Santiago is on a four-fight winning streak, and we mentioned his last fight, he took out the living legend in Nonito Donaire. So he's fought at the highest level before he is the champion in this fight. Round three. Interesting little interaction there between Nakatani and Rudy Hernandez. They were smiling at the end of the break to round number uh, the, between rounds two and three. Curious what they were joking about, because Nakatani did just get hit with some big shots. And you see Nakatani's style there, doing what he should do as the taller, longer fighter, right? Putting that right hand, that lead hand out there, almost like a range finder, sometimes throwing it, sometimes not, but just keeping it out there to bother Santiago. Well, he uses it as an obstruction, both offensively and de defensively. You mentioned that he, he blinds you with that shot, so he's obstructing your vision, but also at the same time, when he takes a half step back and he keeps that hand out there, it keeps you that much further away. So he's either obstructing your vision or your movement with that lead hand, and he wants to unveil that left power shot. You see him setting it up. That's why his feet are so wide. He puts a lot of weight on that back foot to unleash that left hand. And sometimes, at watching tape on Nakatani, you see him throw the jab and then the left hand, but then other times he'll double up on the jab. That changes the timing, and then a fighter on the other side is not ready for the left hand because it comes a second later than you're expecting it to. You know what they say, the punch you don't see is the one that hurts the most, and that's what Nakatani wants to do. He wants to hit you with that punch you don't see. But Santiago's super tough. You're going to have to catch him with something that he's not aware of halfway through this round three. So we saw at the end of round two, Santiago had success when he was able to close distance. And we've been talking about how difficult that is to do, Chris, because you've got to take punishment to do so. But should Santiago try to ride that momentum and, and do the same thing he did at the end of round two? What Santiago needs to do is he needs to, he needs to deceptively close distance, get himself to a position where he can explode and still get to Nakatani. The difficulty there is is tricking Nakatani into, into the not, him not realizing you're getting that close. Because if he tries to explode from the outside, it's going to be very easy for Nakatani to take a half step back and be able to counter. Big left hand over the top, catches Santiago when he thought he was safe on the way out, still was able to land. That's a testament to the long left hand and the reach of Nakatani, that big left hand over the top. And there it is again. Nakatani now finding a home for the left hand. And that's the thing, when Nakatani wants to go forward, he can be very explosive. Comes through with that one, two. Now we got blood over the eye of the champion, Santiago, over that right eye, probably from that overhand left. 
I had mentioned he was cut there, actually over both eyes, in the fight against Donito Donaire, his last fight seven months ago. Draw. Yeah, and we, we saw that in, in the Donaire fight. You know, he, he started a little bit slow. Donaire was very successful early, but Santiago roared back in the second half of the fight. That competitive nature showed itself, and he ended up getting the win. And veteran referee Lawrence Cole is taking Santiago to his corner to rub that Vaseline in. It looks like, Chris, they were trying to just keep it on the cut, but he wants them to rub it in there. Yeah, they, they really globbed it over there, and that could be trouble because it can get in your eye. You can fall on, on the mat and make it more slippery. But really what those the cut man's trying to do is he's trying to get that medicine in there so you can cover it with the Vaseline so that adrenaline can get to work closing up those blood vessels. Nice jab from Nakatani. Good timing, good distance. Half step back, snaps the jab. Left hand gets through again for Nakatani. And that time it was more in the looping fashion. So that just adds another variable to Nakatani's attack. Sometimes that left hand is straight, sometimes it's looping, and, and you really never know. And, and of course, the Maloney fight, which we showed highlights of, that was the looping left hand where he knocked out Maloney in spectacular fashion. Yeah, we saw there, as soon as he threw that looping shot, he got into dangerously close position, and that's where Santiago fired back with his overhand right. So Nakatani has realized, okay, not yet. I can go to the looping punches later, but I gotta stay long, I gotta stay straight for now. Good right hand from Santiago over the top as Nakatani throws the left uppercut from too far away. And it seemed like Santiago had success with that right hand because it was a lead right hand, right? Usually, sometimes you, you set up the power shot with a jab, but that time it was a lead, so it, it caught Nakatani by surprise. Yeah, Santiago is starting to realize that he has to punch with Nakatani because of his control of the range. So as Nakatani steps in to try and hit him, he's got to throw with him. The problem with that is he opens himself up for those shots coming back his way, but really that's his only shot at this point. He needs to punch with Nakatani. Forty-five seconds to go in round four. Junto Naka from the south position. There we saw the overhand right from Santiago, the lead that you were talking about, Curran, that he that he threw while Nakatani was throwing the uppercut from too far away. And there's that other shot you mentioned, changing levels, coming from down, a lower position, landed a very solid left hand over the top. Right on the cut of Santiago. And, and that first highlight there just illustrated how difficult it is to fight Junto Nakatani. He threw that three-punch combination, as you mentioned, Chris, and then moved out of distance because of his, his height and his, his length. He moved away, and Santiago was unable to counter in any way. A lot of it has to do with his balance. He's, he doesn't get over his front foot, so he's always in balance, always in position to take a half step back and be out of range. Hit you and don't be hit. That's what boxing is all about. And we do have open scoring in this fight. All three judges have given every round so far to Junto Nakatani, 40-36. So a huge advantage for the challenger, Junto Nakatani, Chris. Yeah, that's, that's a good start. I mean, I, I wouldn't know how else you could score it at this point. Nakatani doing a great job of, of con uh, containing Santiago, keeping him on the outside and controlling the distance throughout. We've seen moments for Santiago at the end of round two. He was able to get inside and close some distance and land some power shots. But a lot of this fight has been Junto Nakatani working the jab at distance and following it up with power shots. Yeah, at this range, you're just not going to beat Nakatani. He is a master at keeping the distance, throwing those long punches. He's got the height and the reach advantage. He can do this all night long. Clash of heads there. And with everything we've said, 
there is something to be said for will, determination, toughness. We saw that in our last fight with Christian Bacasegua. He wasn't successful, but he was able to go the distance. And the same thing here for Alejandro Santiago. He's as tough as, they, as they've come. And the difference is he's also had success at the world championship level. So I don't see Alejandro Santiago continuing this fight without at least trying other tactics, trying to get inside, trying to, to change up the momentum of this fight. Well, I mean, he is the champion. He is defending his title. Nakatani is the challenger. So, you know, it's going to be more than just trying. I mean, he, he, nobody wants to leave their belt. Ooh, good shots there from Nakatani as he backs Santiago up. Ooh, good combination, letting those hands fly. Junto Nakatani sweeping the opening rounds and now putting on a show in round five. Combinations, quickness, movement. Left hands upstairs, seemingly unanswered. Santiago was frozen there for a moment. He wasn't sure where the punches were coming from. Nakatani mixing up these combinations very well. Ooh, good body shots. Good left uppercut to the liver side of Santiago as Nakatani stops on a dime and fires that left hand. And he's starting to disarm the champion, Santiago. Round six underway on our bantamweight championship fight. Karin Bhatia on the call, joined by former world champion Chris Algieri. Junto Nakatani, the challenger in the white gloves. Alejandro Santiago with the black gloves. So far, according to open scoring and, and what we've been seeing here, it's been all Junto Nakatani using that height advantage, that reach advantage, working off the jab, working off of movement, and Alejandro Santiago looking to make adjustments, looking to get inside. Looking to no avail so far here in round. Oh! Huge left hand by Nakatani drops the champion, Alejandro Santiago, in round six. You know, I'd mentioned multiple times he was going to have to hit the champion with a shot that he didn't see or anticipate. Santiago did not see that punch coming. Straight left hand right down the middle. Beautiful shot. Catches him on the point of the chin, put him down. And here comes Junto Ooh. Nakatani. Oh. Right hand. Down goes Santiago again. This time it was the right hook that caused damage to drop Santiago for the second I time. I think the corner stopped it. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the fight. Junto wow. Nakatani, the challenger, now champion at bantamweight with a sixth round TKO win over Alejandro Santiago. That was very impressive. Junto Nakatani is very special. I am, I am super impressed. I was very high on Santiago. This is a tough fight, like I mentioned, moving up in weight, moving up right into a title fight, right against a very tough champion and to put him away that that way wow shut out and then a six round stoppage super impressive he dared to be great undefeated japanese phenom junto nakatani does it again highlight reel knockout and now world champion in another weight class sky is certainly the limit for junto nakatani that man is special absolutely